Uh, my pleasure to call in Ken Goldman now. Uh, the one uh, non Yerushalmi here, brave enough to live outside of uh, the holy city. Uh, Ken was born in Memphis, Tennessee, and lives on Kibbutz uh, Shluchot uh, in Emek Beit Sha'an now. He holds a BA from Brooklyn College in Fine Arts, which he received in 1981, uh, and then received his Master's of Industrial Design at the Pratt Institute in 1985. He made Aliyah in 1985. Since then, he has been a member of uh, Kibbutz Shluchot, and he is married and a father of four. Thank you. Um, four minutes, so it's a little bit of a race, and just hold on. Um, first scene, please. Okay, I thought for my first piece, I would take my most textual piece that I would show with you and, and introduce myself with a piece that has no written words in it. So if we're talking about text, I think that for me this is the classic textual almost totem. Um, if family stories can be trusted, I was born into text. It, Stories told that as a newborn child, my bed was filled with my father's farm, and that every day there were more and more books put into it up to my Brit. As I got older and I was moved out of that nursery, they moved me into my father's study, where I was surrounded by his piles and piles of books. There was no Raggedy Ann, there were no one of those great Legos, but there were tons and tons of books to build those great towers with. So I started looking at this as more my first piece to show you about text, where it's a more primitive piece, it's more, um, it's, it's more about text before you even open up that book. It's the smell, it's the feel, it's the love affair with the book. Next, please. First um, meeting with actual written text. For many of you, your children, grandchildren, they've gone through the, through the minhag or through the text of what's called chanicha, which in itself is kind of questionable, but we'll leave that for later. The idea is that the young child, first, the age of three, he gets to eat, digest, to lick the letters of honey of the Hebrew alphabet. I love that because, once again, it's taking something that's so, um, that's so concrete, the word, the written word, and making it something that you ingest and make it part of your body before you can even read the words. But what are we doing when we're all iPads, we're all tablets, we're all electric? So what I did was I made my own chanicha font by writing down the letters out of honey, by scanning them into free font so that you could all download this from freefont.com. <laughs> and now when you study with your children, so you virtually have that chanicha experience with all the honey letters. And do I have more time? Okay, next one. Another textual piece. So if we talk about text, well, in Judaism, there's no being alone. There's not that lone artist kind of picture, that romanticism. Everything that we do in Judaism is about the chevruta. It's the give and take. It's the dance. It's the balance. Sometimes I'm up. Sometimes he's up. That's my partner um, in my art community of Kibbutz Tuchot, Gidi, my best friend. And we're often learning about art and talking to each other about it. So it's about the dance. It's about the rhythm that goes on. And now this piece is, um, thanks to Devorah Liss, is in the Mishkan Lomanut and Ein Harod. And you guys could all join me in that dance. And you're welcome to come be part of that of that experience. So it's about text, but it's, there's no words involved with it. Okay, um, I had a great professor um, at Brooklyn College named Teo Ruiz. I don't know if you've all heard of him, but he would start off American history by standing on top of the table, and he wasn't Jew, he was screaming out Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Achad, because he said the greatest thing that happened in Western culture was that Judaism gave us the idea of one God. Well, this piece started out where I had tattoos made for my eyes because, you know, you need a little break during davening, and if you close your eyes, everybody thinks you're sleeping. But Shema was put in that great place. <laughs> gives you just that little bit of rest time. So I thought that I'd have those tattoos on. You all knew that I wasn't really asleep in shul. And then it progressed where it became the idea of the word that was given from above, right, God's gift to us, where we, as Jewish people, are giving it outwards to other people. So it's radiating out. What, am I, I'm good? Okay, um, text, well, this is a, a real textual piece, and it's, and, um, it's uh, a Kaddish piece, and the idea was that I gathered up rocks from my community, my kibbutz, where I've been living for the last 28 years, and that's more years than I lived in the States, and I wrote all the words of the Kaddish, ground them into the stone, and then dyed them, so that people who'd be traveling to the Holocaust and to the different concentration camps could leave these in different places, so you would just leave this. Now, the next person who would come along, you'd pick up this rock, and you'd say, wow, Yitkadal, and maybe 100 kilometers away, somebody would pick up Yitkadash, and the idea would be that those rocks would form a never-ending Kaddish that would keep going on and going on as you found these interesting rocks along the way. I think this is my last scene. Um, Moses is... Uh, 
encounter with God, right? It's cold. They're out in the desert at night, and he sees that burning bush. Now, all of you who've been camping know how cold it is in the desert at night. And I was thinking about that cold once again and the idea of the words where God turns to Moses, and the first thing he says, Shal na lecha lecha. he says, take off your shoes from on your feet, and it goes on and on. And that got me thinking. You know, it's that cold night. And if God was going to appear to me in that burning bush, I hope I would have the sense to just warm my feet up because God's radiance, right, before I'd freak out. So what I did was... <laughs> I had this made into a small little heater. This is a working electric heater that you could bring into your home at night. And when you want to warm your feet, would you be warming your feet by that little heater? So that works, and that's all. You've got to find the right electrician. Thank you very much. Ken, thank you. Truly a regalachat.